my dear brothers and sisters do you have a vision beyond your current circumstances do you have a vision beyond your current circumstances don't think you need to have a vision based on your present circumstances your present circumstances might be poor your present circumstances might be poverty your present circumstances might be sickness your present circumstances might be lack but your vision is not for your present your vision is for your future today as i'm continuing the topic on vision i want to emphasize and focus today on how to fulfill your vision i'm going to give a little introduction on how your vision can be fulfilled but before that i would also like to talk about what happens if there is no vision what happens if there is no vision so today the topic that i'm talking is vision the key to fulfilling your life's purpose vision the key to fulfilling your life's purpose your life's purpose so remember today we might uh, emphasize a little more on your life's purpose uh, that is going to be the tail end of it so god has placed within each person a vision that is de- designed to give purpose and meaning to life god has placed within each person within each person god has placed a vision never think that you do not have a vision you always have a vision there is no man on earth who exists without a vision each and every person definitely has a vision the reason for that vision is to give a purpose and a meaning to your life there is a purpose and a meaning to your life the even though purpose is the birthing for your vision purpose gives birth to your vision but because of vision you also understand your purpose because of your vision you also understand your purpose but the sad part is many of us we do not give importance to our vision we always think that probably that was just a dream you know this is a this is truth when i was a child i always dreamt of building hospitals i always dreamt of building schools i always dreamt of building churches you know and, and and a church as a social enterprise a church is a place where people gather together they share their experiences they talk to each other they help each other grow that is the vision which god has given to me as i was a child but i did not leave that vision i held on to that vision even though there were many offers in my way you know there were many attractive offers in my way i did not take them i did not pursue those offers but i pursued the vision which helped me to complete my purpose for example i was talking uh, in the morning uh, to my worship team i was telling them in the year 2013 i had an offer from a norway company which was planted in dubai i had an offer for 3 lakh per month package and apart from that a house was will be given a car will be given a driver will be given and a cook will also be given and a, a cleaner will be given to clean the house but even though i was given all these facilities i did not pursue that because it was a, it was not aligning with my vision and you know what i joined as an international director in another company which held on to the values the christian faith values that i believe and i follow even though the company of that dubai company was a christian organization the work was totally different from 2013 onwards till 2017 i sticked on to the same organization and the same company that i worked as i never changed it why because it was aligning with my vision it was ali- in alignment with my vision many of us we pick our jobs just because we need to do a job we pick our work just because we need to do a work but my dear brothers and sisters i'm telling you never pick your job because it is a high paying job never pick your work just because it is going to give you better salary you should always pick your work based on your vision hallelujah you need to always pick your work whether that work is going to be aligned with your vision or not some of us must have visited uh, you know 
exhibitions, right? We might have visited exhibitions. In that, we have this uh, rocking horse. I took my nephew uh, to this kind of place, and he was upon this horse. He was riding this horse. This horse is a rocking horse. It moves front and back, front and back, front and back. And he was sitting over there. And I was also with my brother and with my sisters and uh, with a few friends. And we all were visiting this place in Vizac. And my nephew, he was on this rocking horse. He didn't want to get down from this rocking horse. And he was only moving forth, um, front and back. I asked him, Prince, come over. How long are you going to stay? He didn't want to leave that horse. He was enjoying that ride. I was telling him, come, let's go. There are so many other rides that you can do. You can take. And he didn't want to. Then God hit a thought with me. He said, many of people's lives are like that. They are moving front and back, front and back, front and back, front and back, sitting in the same place. But there is no growth. Most of us, we have been doing the same thing without any growth. Most of us are like that, where we are only doing it, doing it, doing it, but no improvement. My dear brothers and sisters, just think about this for your life. Is there any improvement from the past 5, 10 years? Is there, was there any improvement in your life? In the past one year, in the past month, was there any growth? Was there any significant change that you are, that is happening in your life? My dear brother, I f I f our world is filled with people who are busy, but not ultimately effective or satisfied. The reason why you are not being satisfied at your workplace is because there is no improvement in your life. There is no improvement in your workplace. Many of us are doing the same thing. We are stuck doing the same thing. The point is, even though you're doing the same thing, is there growth? Is there improvement in your work? There are, they are doing so much, expending time and expending energy. But you know what? In return, they do not get any kind of value. They do not get any kind of satisfaction. So my question today is, where are you going in your life? Where are you going in your life? For many of us, our jobs is just a part of survival. We think job to survive. But my dear brothers and sisters, if you understand purpose and vision, you never look at job as a survival mechanism. Your job is something which is going to take you to places. If you believe that, say amen. <clears throat> your job should take you to places. Your job is God-given gift to you. You need to understand your work, when you wake up in the morning, it is a God-given gift to you. Your time is God-given gift. So if you're a person who's waiting for weekends, I'm telling you, you're in the wrong workplace. Never wait for weekends. Never wait for weekends. Some of us, we wait for weekends so we can do our recreational activities. We, we wait for the weekend. Many of us say, oh, when will the Friday evening come? When will our Saturday come? When will my Sunday come? My dear brothers and sisters, if you're a person who's waiting for your weekend, you're totally in the wrong track. You better change your track. Because, especially in the IT industry, some of us are working in the IT industry right now sitting in the hall, but you know what? We never felt that ultimate satisfaction. We never really felt that ultimate growth, but even then, you're still doing it. Do you get, do you get up every morning with a sense of anticipation or with a sense of despair? Just answer that, that question to yourself and you are going to find that answer whether you're happy with your work or not. There are thoughts, these are the thoughts which affect most of us in this contemporary world. These are the thoughts which always strangle us. These are the thoughts which always you know, make us think whether we are going in the right direction or not. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to ask you, if you're a person who's waiting for the weekend, you better change your track and follow your vision. Amen. You better change your track and follow your vision. So, whether you're satisfied or unsatisfied, most of us, we only think of retirement. We always think of retirement, especially people who are doing government jobs. 
you know, they ultimately aim at that 60 or 63 year old retirement. And what do you get in return? You get a monthly pension and a small gift from the government. My dear brother, it is not about working for the government or not working for the government. The question is, are you pursuing your vision or not? Are you pursuing your vision or not? Many young people sitting over here, you might, be, you might have tried for government jobs in the past. You might have tried because the only thing that you have learned from your parents or from your previous generation is government job is security. My dear brothers and sisters, there is nothing called as security. Security is just a myth. Anybody can be suspended even in a government job. The point is, whatever job that you are in right now, are you doing it in the most effective way or not? That's the reason why, for many of us, we do not have a reason for living. There is no reason for living. We only get up in the morning. We get up in the morning, we don't know why we get up. We get up, we sleep in the night, we don't know why we sleep. We eat food, there is no reason for you to eat food. My dear brothers and sisters, the reason why your mind is thinking like that is because lack of vision, lack of sense of purpose. Every person needs to have that personal purpose. Every person needs to have that personal vision. My dear brother, if you ask people, why do you exist? Most cannot tell. You cannot tell why you exist. You think you are existing because God has created you. As a matter of fact, God has created you with a sense of purpose. Do you have a sense of personal purpose today? It gives you a passion for living. A sense of personal purpose gives you a passion for living. You know, every day I get up. I do not get up saying, ah, it's morning, so I need to get up. I do not say that, oh, I let me sleep for some more time. You know, as soon as I wake up, I think, what is that I need to do today? Even before I sleep, I think of what is that I need to do the next morning. You know, when there is a weekend, when there is a day off for me, you know what I do? I store up more information in my mind. Do you know what I do on my week offs? I plan for my next 10 years. Do you know what I do in my, on my week offs? I, on my, in my week offs, I do not wait for my week off, actually. I think, oh, my week off. Today is my week off. You know what? So let me plan my next 10 years. My dear brothers and sisters, if you want to have a life like this, it all starts with a sense of purpose and a sense of vision. You need to start thinking in these directions. Life is not meant to be aimless. Life is never meant to be aimless. Life is never meant to not take you anywhere. Life should take you somewhere. Life should take you somewhere. You were meant to be going somewhere, to be headed towards a direction. That's the reason why I got this quote while I was thinking about this. If there is no road, if there is no destination for you to go, any road is going to take you to that place. If there is no destination in your mind, if there is no sense of vision, if there is no sense of purpose in your head, my dear brother and sister, any road is going to take you there. That means you're going to, you're going to buy up any vision. You're going to buy up any purpose. You're going, to, you're going to think that that is your vision and that is your purpose. That is the reason what happens is you start living without a dream. That is a very dangerous situation. Never live without a dream. Each and every person who's sitting in this hall right now, I'm telling you, you need to start living with a dream. What am I going to do for the next 10 years? You need to have a plan of action on what or how you can achieve your vision. My dear brothers and sisters, emphasizing on the, on the truth is the most important thing. As a matter of fact, do you know the poorest person in the whole wide world is not the person who has a low bank balance, but it is the person who doesn't have a vision. The poorest person in the whole wide earth or world is the person with no dream. My dear brothers and sisters, have you ever imagined why did God give you the capacity of dreaming? God did not give you the capacity of dreaming so you can just dream in your night. God has given you the capacity of imagination so that you can think beyond your present circumstances. Hallelujah. My dear brother and sister, emphasizing the truth, you need to always stick on and hold on to the truth. Without truth, you're not going to go anywhere. No matter how much money you have. If you do not have a vision, 
you're not going to go anywhere. No matter how rich you are. I was telling Vivek a few months back, I was telling him, do you know Vivek, I can simply sit at my home, eat and do nothing. That's how, that's how blessed I am by God. All I can do is just sit at home, watch TV, read a newspaper, sip on that coffee, eat good food, and rest. But no, I was never meant to do that. That is not my vision. I have a vision. I have a sense of purpose. They never let me sit down and sip on that cup of coffee. As a matter of fact, I would say, I would even leave that cup of coffee to pursue my vision. I would even leave that comfortable life to pursue my vision. My dear brothers and sisters, what are you today? If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. Worst is, you won't even know that you have already arrived. My dear brothers and sisters, there are many young people today in the house. Your youth shouldn't be wasted. Your youth should not be wasted. Do the hardest thing right now. You know why? Because when you hit 50, when you hit 60, the same energy won't be there. That's the reason why, you know, I choose the hardest place in order to establish a school when I was 27. And I choose the second hardest place to establish the second school when I was 29. My dear brother and sister, what is that you're choosing? Are you choosing the hardest things first? Or are you choosing the easier things? Do you have a vision beyond your present circumstances? You know, when I was dreaming about my school, about, about the hospitals that I want to establish, when I was dreaming about this social enterprise, the kind of experience that I want to create for people, I was, I was envisioning myself beyond my present circumstances. I have never even saw, I never saw this kind of idea anywhere else in the world. I don't know where I was getting this. I don't know where I was getting all these thoughts from. But you know what? I held on to those thoughts. And you know what? Today, God is enabling them after so many years. You know when I started dreaming about this, to really be honest with you, I started dreaming about this from when I was 8, 9, 10 years old. 8, 9, I, I hardly remember. But I started really focusing this on these subjects on from 13 years, 1, 3. Not 3, 0. 1, 3. That's when, from that time on, God was speaking to me. And I was not leaving the thoughts that God was giving to me. The main problem with us is, we always tend to give up. We always tend to leave them. My dear brother and sister, you shouldn't give it up. The reason why you got that vision, vision is, because God says, I'm going to do this through you. Hallelujah. I'm going to do this through you. My dear brothers and sisters, do you have a vision beyond your current circumstances? Do you have a vision beyond your current circumstances? Don't think you need to have a vision based on your present circumstances. Your present circumstances might be poor. Your present circumstances might be poverty. Your present circumstances might be sickness. Your present circumstances might be lack. But your vision is not for your present. Your vision is for your future. Hallelujah. Your vision is for your future. Without a vision of the future, life loses its meaning. Without a vision for the future, life won't have any kind of meaning. You don't know why you're going to get up. You don't know why you're going to dress up. You don't know why you're eating. You don't even know why you're going to a certain place to work. You live a life with constant longing but no satisfaction. You always long to do something. But you know what? there won't be any kind of satisfaction. Why? Because without vision, you won't have any hope for the future. That's the reason why you don't know why you're getting up. That's the reason why you don't know what you're doing. My dear brothers and sisters, you need to understand that a visionless life is a poverty-stricken existence. A visionless life is a poverty-stricken existence. Without vision, you cannot really do anything. My dear brother and sisters, repeat this after me. I will think beyond my circumstances. This is what exactly gives you hope. 
and a future. You know, this was what God was talking about Jeremiah in 29, 11, one of my favorite verses. For I know the plans I have for you. For I know the plans I have for you. This was the verse that God was talking to Jeremiah saying, hey, you know what? Even before you were born from, look at that word. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You know, God was talking to Jeremiah and he was saying, even before you were born, you are formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I have the plans for you. Your dreams are the plans of God. Did you understand this? Your dreams are God's plans for you. Your dreams are not some silly things that just happened. Your dreams are not just something which happened unexpectedly. No! My dear brothers and sisters, your childhood was about your future calling you to be. It was all about your future. God is saying, I know the plans I have for you. I told you the poor, poorest person in the whole wide world is the person without a vision. Do you, can you dream today? So living with unfulfilled dreams. Most of us, we might have had this vision, but you know what? We never strive to fulfill it. We never strive to fulfill it. Having a vision or a dream is inherent inside a human being. It is always inbuilt into you. That is the reason why nobody tells you to dream. Nobody tells you to envision it. You automatically envision it. Amen. You automatically think about it. My dear brothers and sisters, what is your dream? What do you imagine yourself doing? Just go back, probably 10 years, 15 years, maybe 20 years, or maybe 30 years. Just go back to what your dream was. What do you imagine yourself doing? What do you want to accomplish? Are you really doing what you wanted to do in your life? Did your dreams die? They simply died. You have tried and given it up. Huh? Some of us have tried it. And because it didn't work out, we have given it up. My dear brothers and sisters, in order to fulfill your vision, you need to wage a war. Your test. You need to face a lot of tests. It is not going to be so easy. Most of us, we want a comfortable life. That's the reason why when a test comes, we give it up. As a matter of fact, test is, the very exist is existing because it wants to find out the truth. Whether you're going to be faithful to your vision or not. Whether you're faithful to your vision. The reason why God puts tests in your life is He wants to understand how you're doing. Without, without test, David would have been a shepherd. Without test, a shepherd would never grow into a king. Without a test, a Samson, Samson failed in the test. That's the reason why he, got, he became blind. And yet God has given him a second chance and he proved himself over there. My dear brother and sister, you might have failed in those tests, but you know what? God is going to give you another chance again. God is going to give you another chance again. Do you dream of yourself becoming a lawyer and establishing your own firm? Do you dream of yourself uh, becoming, uh, you know, becoming the best selling boutique in the city? Do you dream of yourself becoming the best uh, shoemaker? Do you dream of yourself becoming, making the best uh, leather handbags in the world? Do you dream of, of, how do you dream of yourself in the next 10 years? That is very important. How do you envision yourself, my dear brothers and sisters? Are you getting exhausted by the end of the week? If you are a person who is getting exhausted by the end of the week, you need to check yourself whether you are in pursuance of your dream or not. 
I would like to give an example from our church only. This guy present over there, he got fever on Saturday. Oh, no, on, on a Friday. And uh, I told him, you just go get tested. So he, got, he went and he got tested. It was negative. But fever was still there. Saturday morning, usually what we do, what do we do if we have fever? We just go home, sleep, take rest. Saturday morning, he showed up for practice. The reason why he showed up for practice is because he wanted to do, what is that? Battle of the bands. He wanted to participate in, the, in, in this one thing called Battle of the Band, and he, 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 he needs to play drums in that band. He didn't want to miss out that opportunity. So even though he was sick, he was ready to sacrifice that time. He was even ready to sacrifice his health in order to just go and visit that place. My dear brothers and sisters, that's exactly what happens when you are a man of dreams. Even when I was sick, a few months back, I was having a lot of cold. And the next day was a Sunday. On Saturday or Friday, I got cold. And it was really heavy. I mean, my body was totally down. I was not able to walk. I was not even able to get up. But Sunday morning, I was not able to sit and watch myself while the church was happening on the TV. You know what I did? I waited, I waited, I said, God, give me strength, just so I can take a shower. I was like, give me strength to, to take a shower. My wife left in the morning at 6.30. I was all alone. The maids came, they were clean. I'm like, I don't want to be here. You know what? Even though I didn't have the energy to take a shower, I took a shower, I got dressed myself, I put on a mask, and I came here, and I sat at the production table, and I was watching what was happening. If you're a man of dreams, if you're a man of a vision, nothing is going to stop you. You need to start sacrificing a lot of things. You know, how many marriages I have sacrificed for my vision? How many good times with friends I have sacrificed for my vision? You need to sacrifice. Never think that vision will simply happen. Many of us are just like that on the rocking chair. My dear brothers and sisters, when your plans don't implement, Frustration builds up in you. You know, when frustration builds up, you spill beans on other places. You spill beans on your wife because your vision you was not implemented and it frustrates you. A lot of us, we live with frustration. We live with a lot of frustration. This is not working, that is not working. My dear brothers and sisters, maybe you tried a few things which did not work out. Maybe you're tired of trying something new. But you know what? Never give up your hope. God is a God of second chances. Hallelujah. You are born to be distinct. You are born to be distinct. You are not born to be just like the same other person. Do you know, if you, you are not created to blend in, but you are created to stand out. Turn to your neighbor and say, you stand out. I really like people who stand out. I don't really like people who blend in. Blending in is, you know, for example, if you watch uh, flowers, first of all, they all seem to be alike. But when you go near and you watch all those flowers carefully, none of the flower looks the same. They just blend in, but they're different. Amen? You know, when you look into a forest, when you, if you go to a forest, you think all the trees, they're the same. No, they just blend in, but they're unique. They all are unique. For example, each and every person on the stage who was here before, we all are different. But you know what? We have blended in in order to give the final vision that we have envisioned. My dear brothers and sisters, uniqueness is a part of God's creation. Never forget that. Uniqueness is a part of God's creation. You are unique. Because you are unique, don't belittle yourself. Just because you are unique, that doesn't mean you are wrong. No, because you are unique. God says, I have a unique vision for you. Because you are unique, God says, I have made you in a different, for a different reason. All humans are made unique. 
You possess your own strength, uh, which your brother doesn't possess. You probably have a unique gift. So don't compare yourself with your siblings. Don't compare yourself with your neighbor. Don't compare yourself with your classmate. Don't compare yourself with somebody who is doing something. My dear brothers and sisters, never take another person's opinion about you. Never take another person's opinion about you. Why? Because you are unique and different. You are unique and different. If ever somebody looks down on you, look to yourself in the mirror and say, you, you, the original thing. Hallelujah. This is exactly what you got to say. You got to look into the mirror and you say, you are original, man. You are original. You're not like your sibling. You're not like your father. You're not like your mother. You're not like somebody else. You are unique. You are unique. You are one of a kind. Probably you're a class apart like me. Hallelujah. There is no one else like you. Turn to your neighbor and say, there is no one else like you. God wanted you to be perpetually rare. Amen. God wants you to be perpetually rare. That's the reason why our church is unique. You never see in a church like this. Our messages are unique. Probably you never heard a message like this. The way we sit over here is different. The way we talk, what we talk is totally different. Why? We are unique. Amen. Just because you're unique doesn't mean you're wrong. God has a different purpose for you. Let's all close our eyes, close the service. My dear Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the words that you have spoken to encourage us and reignite the vision that you have given to us. My Father, as we gather together to worship you, to praise you, thank you for talking to us today. Thank you for giving us your vision today. Thank you for reigniting and re-emphasizing what purpose means today. Lord, as we are going back home with this, with this word from you, let this word be of a great meaning to you, to us. Lord, let this word be of a great meaning to us, oh Father. Let this word start living inside us. Let us be found in your presence as we enter into a fantastic Monday. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. May the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us for now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Ilanti Mareno videos, Vakyalu, Patalu, Vinadanki, e channel ki subscribe chendi, alage bell icon ni click chendi so that make notifications of the You can always follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Our Facebook and Instagram handles NLI777 and Ernest Mahanti. Thank you.